We ready to do this? Ready, ready, Freddy. Let's do it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Out About. I'm Patrick. And you all know my friends. Chili. Buttermilk. Eric. And Jerry. And we're back. The OG crew just hanging out tonight. Uh, we're actually doing it a little weird tonight. We're doing a, uh, a week early. Spoiler alert. I know we're not supposed to tell the audience that, but uh, we are. <laughs> because when you're listening to this right now, Buttermilk, you are in Oregon. Nope. I'm in Oregon. Same thing, right? It, it won't be gone. It'll still be there. <laughs> but... Unless there's an earthquake and it well, falls Are off you the taking coast. the trail? No, no, I don't want dysenteria. I have a baby to hold. <laughs> I have a new grandson to hold, so I, I do not want dysenteria. No, uh, yeah, so these come out on Saturday. It'll be my last Saturday there. Um, oh, you'll actually be kind of saying goodbye, won't you? It'll be some bittersweet goodbyes, yep. Uh, maybe a birthday party to attend. I know I was invited to uh, a girlfriend we share October month. Sadly, she's a Scorpio, not a Libra. We won't hold that against her. We could. Uh, but anyway, um, I was invited, and, and uh, I don't know if she's doing it this, my last Saturday there. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know really what my weekends look like. Um, I'm at the, I wouldn't say mercy of my children with the baby, but uh, what, what their needs are is what I'm there for. So So what you're really trying to say is that... <clears throat> You're at the mercy of your children yes. and grandchildren yes. and based on their needs. Yes, because I won't have been staying at their house as far as I know. I'm staying with my, my bestie, and, and uh, but I don't know. We'll, it'll be my last Saturday, so wow. so that's why we're recording early. But I am so excited. I've, I fly out tomorrow, which I know most people are listening to this on a different day. So I, I, I would have flown out on f- Friday, October 18th. Gotcha. Yes. So. How was the flight? Well, it's... I upgraded my seat, so let's hope it's good. Ooh. Oh, no. But it is an early flight. That, well, there's no good way to get out to the West Coast except for early flights, isn't there? Yeah. We go back to Salt Lake City. Or I go back to Salt Lake City. I like Salt Lake. It was beautiful. That actually was a fun uh, It was a fun airport. I mean, yeah. I didn't really care for the fact that we couldn't land uh, and had to do that twice. It was fun. Oh, yeah. you weren't with us, were you? That was just Vince and Eric and I, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, because I stayed last time for the baby shower. Yeah. So, yeah. They yeah. tried to have us land on a runway that had an airplane on it. Yeah. Oh, that won't work. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, it, it would. We could certainly land on that runway. Correct. If we wanted to be in a bunch of pieces. Uh, parts. Parts. Yeah. 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 So You mean the uh, airplane can't do that motorcycle thing to Just swerve go around. off to the side? <laughs> the runways aren't wide enough, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, that's uh-huh. the problem. Well, you, know, you would think they do that for safety, right? Make them wider, but no, they won't. No. No, they just pay like 20 people to sit in a tower and monitor everything. And Somebody didn't have enough coffee that morning or clearly, something. Clearly. Clearly. It was, it was exciting because we were like coming in and... Could you see it? Sp- I, n- <clears throat> I don't know how many airplanes you've been in where you can see forward. <laughs> <from> <laughs> <the side. laughs> Yeah. Ironically, <laughs> we've been on in and, one. Did the pilot we come have. on and make something cheeky about it, or what? Well, so, yes, <laughs> but not right away. He did, uh, I mean, obviously at the point, because we were coming in, and it was like, I guess he realized, like, this plane's not moving out of our way. And so, I mean, you do see, on um, both, you know, at the window, you see, like, the trees are really close. Like, we are really about to land, and then we took off or whatever. And uh, and and got out of the way, and so they had to do all the maneuvers right because that, that wasn't planned. So they're immediately talking back and forth with their traffic control, trying to get centered up and all, and uh, and 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 get back in rotation without hitting one of the other planes coming into land or taking off even. So they, it was a little moment of like not sure what's happening. It's someone even said like, oh, you know, Salt Lake City has terrible winds sometimes, so this can happen kind of thing. And I'm thinking to myself, it didn't feel windy. We felt pretty stabilized <laughs> yeah, coming in. It felt good. Like, I don't know what they mean by that. And then uh, probably 15 minutes after we did the go-around, the pilot came on the, in the announcement and said, sorry, folks, there was an airplane on the runway and couldn't land it. Wouldn't have been good. No. You're so, welcome. Yes. It was It was a very appropriate thing for them to do. I think people don't know, too, when we do back-to-back recordings in a week, sometimes it's, I feel... It's hard to dig deep for content. Granted, we're still cherry, st- whoop, bleep, sharing your story. 
Wow. Now, what's really hard for content is when Jimmy and, and Don are texting me and Vince <laughs> mid-conversation. <laughs> it's super distracting. Um, Part of trekking. I agree. Always on for those maintenance guys. Always on. Always on. So, Jerry, how's it been your week since I haven't seen you two days ago? Good. <laughs> Doing really, really good. <laughs> Has it been busy? Yeah, always busy. Ah, I yeah, like yeah. the I like the shirt. Uh, it's Chiquita, right? Not Carhartt. It's Chiquita. It's Carhartt. <laughs> I had a funny from uh, the day after recording last week. A funny? A funny. You know, we talked about Pilot. And the one here in Columbus, how the parking lot is just ridiculous. It's bumpy and yes. just torn up. It's horrible. Uh, so the very next morning, uh, I was taking a truck over to fuel. And what are they doing but carving up the parking lot to repair it? Yeah. Oh. I, so I guess they heard our podcast. Early. And thought, I think Jerry leaked it. I think Jerry did <laughs> leak it. Yeah. Yeah, Jerry did leak it. I think what Jerry was trying to do was get that, that – um, that uh, sponsorship money from them. Oh, was that's like, hey, that sweet pilot money. We talked about this. You guys are not doing so great. Yeah. I'm going to let you know ahead of time. This is the things I can do for you. Maybe send a little sweet pilot money our way. And then he actually edited it in and, and post, post-production right. out of the last exactly. one. Exactly. So now that it's, yeah. But he also Did has to edit out how too? much. I was going to say, he has to edit out how much he hates their coffee. Because <laughs> when they hear that, they're going to not sponsor. So. No, that's actually the clip he sent them. <laughs> he said that clip. We're going to air this. And then he said something about uh, your parking lot's uneven. Um, so, no, we, uh, I actually went to that pilot today, and uh, I saw those big squares. So they didn't do the whole parking no, lot. not the whole thing. But there's, like, these massively big squares of just freshly poured asphalt, and it's it's nice. Is I it mean, better? Oh, Do they fix day. that big bump right when you enter the driveway? Ooh. Because you go in the driveway yeah. and you immediately go up the driveway and you go bloop, bloop. Possibly. Well, let's hope. Yeah. I saw it. It had paint lines around it, so I'm hoping they, they take care of that. I hope so as well. Right. I don't remember it being too crazy. I will say we were talking about that because we were talking about the mud flaps. Yes. So I had to take one of our brand new trucks uh, out to trailer shop. Trailer shop. It, had, uh, it has those things. And so, you know, I'm driving around and turn to get on the interstate and, yeah. and, and, and you know, hit a bump and, you know, all that stuff. So I got on the interstate and I'm headed out there and there's a certain section of road where it's like uh, pretty, got a dip in it. Ready? Got a dip in it. Ready. Pretty, pretty ruddy. And I'm in the low part of the dip, of the rut, but that means the side of the mud flap is actually rubbing against the concrete <laughs> oh, you as just, I'm going. You just file those bad boys right down for right so the at team one, going in at, there. At one point, I looked out my mirror on the uh, passenger side, as you should do periodically while sure. you're driving, and I just see smoke billowing out. And I'm like, is my truck on fire? And then it occurred to me, I'm like, Oh, it's that rubber. <gasps> it has just that would be scary. It's just burned off, yeah. and I was like, "Oh, that's yeah." It was a little nerve wracking, so I got out of the rut, and it went away. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a little like, "Ooh, okay." You know, just that's filing it down quick. It was filing it down quick, sixty-five miles an hour. Yeah, that's yeah, gonna cause some smoke. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, it's been uh, it's been fun. I've actually been working out in the yard. Uh, Past few days, uh, working out with you and um, Eric. Eric, it's, it's been appreciated. Eric Bender. Bender. Yeah, been, been been in the weeds the last few days. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we've been doing a lot of like swaps. Yeah, as we well. Been doing a lot of swaps. So we're getting yeah. people like uh, maybe you come in and you don't get the ideal truck that you wanted. So we have like side by side trucks. We have single bed trucks. We have uh, trucks that are with bathrooms that we reward uh, excelling teams in, and so. We've pretty much had all of that happen. We've had yeah, we uh, bathrooms uh, come available, and uh, we've had even more than that. We've had we've had teams moving into bathroom trucks. Yep. Yep. We've had teams moving out of side by sides into same household. Yep. And a side by side is two twin beds. Two twin beds. Yes. yes. And a same household is one full size bed. Correct. For those of you that are new to the channel and listening. Yes. And so uh, we sometimes call the uh, side by sides a dorm style bed. So it is literally like. There's a bed on, on, on the driver's side wall, a bed on the passenger side wall, and between them is a closet or a refrigerator, depending on the model. Right. We've had teams move into a, the side-by-side -side model. We've had a team, uh, we're about to, uh, 
we worked on their truck today about to do a lease purchase with us on a truck. So we're getting that truck prepared. We've just been literally doing like everything we can do. We don't have a tra- tractor in the yard. We don't have a tractor. That's what in the we yard. couldn't do. No. We don't. We don't have a tractor in no. Columbus. Um, Knock on wood. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's just been crazy. Just the pure quantity of trucks have moving around. And what's really funny, uh, I was talking to um, one of our teams who uh, I know you listen to the podcast. So you're gonna be laughing because you know I'm talking about you. <laughs> um, they were in the yard today and they were talking about. Um, all the trucks and there's so much motion and they were over at one of our shops and there's so many trucks there, all these Panther and FedEx trucks. They're like, is something going on? Why is there all these trucks? And I'm like, that, the math wasn't adding up to me. So I get over to that shop today because I actually had to do a swap, take one truck out there and pick one up and bring it back. And I get out there and there's like three FedEx trucks and four Panther trucks that aren't ours. Aren't ours, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's hysterical. Yep. So if you don't know any better, yeah, this does just... look like all of our trucks. Sure. Uh... I was like, oh, that's so funny. Um, they do a lot of work on expediters there. They do. A they lot. really do. They yep. really do. Uh, they're, I they're think word got out. I was about to say, yeah. I think the word got out that yeah. they were really, really good. So Yeah, which is good for them. I mean, like, it's uh, – they used to – years ago, they were, like, the place to get a lot of uh, generator and special stuff done for all these expediters. And then the, the salespeople up at FIDA, Freightliner, changed hands, you know, they lost one of their main sales guys. Another one came in. That guy didn't work out very long. Another one came in. That guy ended up moving within the company to another another section. Then we got another guy in, and now we have a new guy in. There's been a lot of turnover. Uh, not necessarily turnover as in quitting, but just right, shuffling. Just yeah. We finally have someone that's been here for a couple of years now, and I think mm-hmm. he's going to stick. Because of all that, you know, when you take over this division, they were kind of making their – the, the contacts they already had with other shops or sure. whatever. And so some of that kind of got watered down and you do start to see all over Columbus now, at all different shops you see expediters. It's not necessarily yeah. centralized in, in only a couple shops. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. But now I think word is getting back. Other people are finding out like, hey, there are these other options that are really solid. So um, Solid being the word. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. they're uh, they're getting that. that it's, just, uh, it's just funny that it's like people are thinking like, oh, those are high field trucks. <laughs> and they're really not. <laughs> some of them I wish they were, but you know. some of them. Right? Others you go, yeah. No, no yeah. There's some no of them that I'm you. like, yeah. So last week we were talking about um, building of uh, those trucks and right. how every time you know we'd get something down, it'd be solid. And we'd be very happy with it. Something would change. Sure. And Freightliner was guilty most of the time. They yeah. would change the style of the cab or how long the nose is or something. Well, we talked about it last week that we were nervous about the upcoming changes that were. Uh, in play for Freightliner, and from what I, uh, the article you sent me today, it dropped finally. It dropped finally. Yes, it did. Yes. Yes, it did. I thought it was strange they dropped it from a military cargo plane uh, with a parachute. That was ah! very strange, but, but it landed perfectly. Well, it did land perfectly, yeah. and it, it was kind of cool. The only way it could have been better is if Elon Musk had reached out and grabbed it with those fancy arms he grabs robots, <laughs> or, or rockets, rockets with, with, and set it gently on the ground. Well, he's a competitor. His, that's right. With he would have, t- he would have, he would have grabbed it yep. and thrown and squ- it on the ground and, and, and squished, it. squished it. <laughs> oh, squished, just, yeah. It just set it down. Yep. Here you like, go. Here you go. Recycled oh, was that, it was for that your you. prototype? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So no, they, they rolled yep. it out. I gotta say. If I'm being so bold, it's a good looking truck. It is a good looking truck. It like, truly is a good looking truck. Volvo's new one they dropped, which we kind of skipped over, didn't really talk about because it happened in the off season. It did. It's funky. It's kind of weird. It's not my favorite truck in the world. Um, this is the Volvo. This is the Cascadia. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it just. They they just really took the uh, the Cascadia and uh, not a huge change. Not a huge change, really. No, I would say subtle, right? B- very subtle. Yeah, that's oh. that's S U B T L E for those of you don't, who don't speak Patrick and Vince. Yeah, they changed the the hood. They changed the headlights. Mm-hmm. They changed uh, the front bumper. And I say they changed the hood. Not much. No, not much at all. Uh, basically, they have these new headlights on it, and they're kind of. More rounded mm-hmm. off. Uh, they're nowhere near as big as they used to be. And uh, they call them the new forty-five. Yes. So I don't know what that means. Though. They shoot forty-five degrees down as far and straight out. Uh, and so it's completely eliminated the need for fog lights. 
um, because they're they're LEDs, so they're able to like really focus all that stuff in. Um, Jerry, what did you say that you liked about the headlights? There was something. They have um, auto defogging because with LEDs, oh, yeah. they don't get hot enough to melt snow and ice, yep. and these heat up and defog and all that. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Very cool uh, stuff. Um, it just looks like that. The bumper looks really cool, and I'm just wondering how much of a pain it's going to be to replace when a deer hits it. <laughs> it can't be as much as a pain as replacing the Western Star bumpers. Well, it could be because the problem with Western Star bumpers is you can't get them. Yes. So I'd imagine we probably won't be able to get these either for a long time. Probably. But we won't see these trucks for how long? Oh, year I mean, to a couple now? years. By the time they actually get in, so, yeah. the previous backlog of f- chassis is, is built by the by the custom sleeper builders. Right. And then they start getting the new chassis. So a couple of years, I, I'd guess. Yeah. Well, so these will drop mid-2025. That means that, I mean, like they're going to start making them in mid-2025. Right. Ca- Freightliner is. Freightliner. So yeah. that's almost a year from now. And then... Let's say we got one of the first bins, mm-hmm. which we're not going to because they're going to sprinkle them around. Prime's going to get a few. Swift's going to get a few. Right. You know, they're going to sprinkle the, the love around with all their big carriers and all their big customers. Um, and then they'll start letting us regular people get them. Um, and when they do that, uh, like you were just saying, it then has to go to the uh, Upfitter right, or for the sleeper company for us. Um so it's Bolt or ARI. Um, and then it's from there, it's going to go to the body shop, get a body put on it. Um, then it's going to go get uh, either the reefer done to it or sure. the generator added or whatever. And so by the time we see it, it you're talking early 2026 yeah. at well, the even, earliest? Even the upfitter, they have to go through and make sure everything Correct. works properly. Yes. Because there's going to be wiring changes and that type of thing that you have to work out. And Absolutely. So, yeah, they're, they're not the going to get one in and just... Still compatible with your current build? So I don't know. This particular article about it doesn't give uh, the details on what they are doing um, as far as the uh, bumper to back cab measurements, um, which really makes a huge difference. Um, it, it, it is a minor upgrade, basically, from what I can tell. It is aesthetics mostly. Um, there's some cool technology things they're doing, like with the headlights, also with um, the. Uh, like collision avoidance system mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is getting four more close sensors. sensors. Yeah. Um, so they're able to get a little more geometric with that, which I know people are like, oh gosh, that system. Well, the, the more sensors, the more they dial that in, the less you have the false emergencies and right. stuff. Um, so there is something cool that Buttermilk would have loved when she was on the truck. Autopilot. Autopilot would, would have been great <laughs> for her. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she drove nights and she could take a nap while the truck, truck is driving. Um, but just kidding. The just kidding. The push and pull oh. air brake controls are gone. This is cool. Electronic. It's now a toggle switch. Yes. Oh. So she would pull that thing and just her hand would hurt for days. Uh, so now it's just a toggle switch for your, I think for it your would air brake. Pop out and bruise the palm or something. Like I always, and obviously I did it. I can tell you right now, my hand, my right hand hurts because today I've done a lot of driving and moving trucks. So I've hit that parking brake and pulled it out mm-hmm. probably 20 times a day. Yeah. I, ha- I have a... a, a um, Permanent callus? A, a, a triangular-shaped <laughs> callus on my yeah. hand from pushing that brake in. Yes. And the other side of that, too, going electronic, is they said they removed the airlines and the dash yes. to that. So now you don't have that loud... Psh- yeah. yeah. Yep. I did see that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I dig it. I mean, I'm sure there's... I'm, there's a lot of people like me going, all right, but now you've got a valve that's electrically actuated and a button that can fail. Sure. You've added more complexity and yada sure. yada. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is a, you know, pretty well, reliable. I think it's going to be like anything where it has to be tested a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, and then when Swift and Knight and all those guys get their hands on them, they'll test them a lot more. So by the time it gets down to us, hopefully, that all the bugs will be worked out. Absolutely. Well, you Fingers know. Fingers crossed. We run uh, electric switches in our dash for our, our lift axles. Some of our trucks have lift axles, sure. and those you can you hit that, and that really doesn't fail. No, because that's just two wires, and it's it's going to a relay yeah. to activate the lift axle. Those those usually work pretty fine. Um, so I'm assuming if it's kind of the similar thing, sure. it should be the same. Should be. We do have lift axle issues, but that that's, that's not a whole different. That's thing. not one of them. Yeah, I think it's cool. Uh, very cool. It looks nice. It's funny that they actually took the picture. 
of the red yeah. stop sign for the trailer brakes, yeah. of the yellow one. It's still the picture on the switch. Yes, it's still yeah. the picture on the switch. And it's a big switch. Yep. It's not a yep. little bitty one. Is it going to have a safety mechanism so if you're running and you hit that, it won't engage? It's going to have to. Uh, it doesn't mention that here, but it's going to have to. Yeah. Just be, that the, you, it'd be too easy to, to reach over there to gr try and grab the utility lights or something and hit the wrong switch. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's going to have to. Well, I think I think that's cool. I, I so if your RPMs or M MPHs are certain, it won't let you. It Probably. won't let you. Yeah. Yeah. Probably you know, require the brake to be applied and the truck to be stopped before it'll work. Oh, that's a good. That'd be my thinking. And if they haven't thought of that, that one's a free one, Trait Liner. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit Trucks North America. Uh, yeah. No, I think it... They it, didn't show any dash or anything. Do you think they're going to go all I digital? I don't... Well, they're... I know they had as far as the As far as the digital screens? Like, yeah, like go all digital, you know, not just the little center piece. So, yeah, so I know no they more, had the... No more analog speedometer. Okay, so they already have that. So if you can imagine your gauge cluster, your... But is your, it standard? Your, no, no. So your 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 tachometer and your fuel and your all that stuff, that is already you can get that. Um, Peterbilt has it. I think Volvo has it too. Uh, all of them have it as an option. I will say this: Peterbilt and Kenworth recalled like hundred fifty thousand trucks yeah. because that screen was messed up. You know, it, it's it's more to go wrong right. than an analog gauge, and it adds cost to the truck. I I know a lot of. Mega fleets aren't using it, but but some are. We have not gone to that option because it's new, and I want it to be tested. I, I have not heard about Freightliner having a recall on those yet, so maybe they're getting it from a different source. But it's definitely something where where we have taken the stance of like, let's see what happens first, and then we'll and then we'll go uh, that direction. Probably around the time they make it standard, because at some point it is more cost effective just to have every truck with the same thing. That's what I was thinking. Um, and they and they do have their little infotainment center. As well, uh, we have not added that either, uh, but that's more of a utilitarian. We use that space for our data, uh, loggers, data and loggers and TCU and controllers. TCU controllers. Yeah. So that's just real estate. We need a certain amount of space yeah. on the dash and can't give it up. It'll be interesting to see what, what where they go with this. And, and, and um, It is only a 1.9% increase in fuel economy. That new Volvo, they say, is a 10% increase in fuel Ooh. economy. Yeah. I'd still I'd be curious to see what that looks like side by side. So was the Cascadia already so fuel efficient that it, it only had a little bit to go? Right. And the Volvo needed a lot to go? Or is it like, no, the Volvo is quite a bit more fuel efficient than the Cascadia? I'm mean, cur curious to see how that goes. And there's some big fleets that run both trucks. I'm sure we'll get that data. Yeah, I'm excited uh, to start seeing these things roll out. Yeah, it's um, fun stuff to watch. It'll love seeing that technology get better and smarter. They introduced uh, the second evolution of the side item detecting monitor um which i think is great because we had six trucks i want to say mm -hmm. with it i had one they did not have that dialed in great right so we quit buying it uh because it was just too much of a disturbance but i am glad to see they have a new update of it out now they so. now have it on the driver's side too do they yeah it's cool it's part of it i know like when the bendix came out which was terrible they had options for both sides or just one. Um, but the Volvo we had and the Cascadias we had, they only had the passenger side. Yeah, I'll be anxious to see these on the road. They look really nice. It doesn't indicate any option, any changes transmission-wise, suspension-wise. That all kind of looks the same. So really more electronical. Get gizmos and gadgets. Absolutely. Gizmos and gadgets and just making that front a little more aerodynamic. Yeah. So we talked the other day about how... Um, you know, the the making of Highfield and the different things we've done and our timeline and all that stuff. And we've talked about how we got started. We've talked about how we changed the industry a little bit when it, uh, on some of the trucks when it comes to the uh, bathrooms in the trucks. Uh, we, I alluded to uh, some mistakes in learning we've had over yes. the years. So I thought I'd share those with y'all. All right. Ooh, yeah. Today, yeah. we're going to talk about, well, let me reset that up. It's not that I'm going to share the mistakes we made, although there are some in this segment but this is going to be some some evolutions that we've had uh, and we're going to talk mostly from an apu generator uh perspective so Ooh. i want to talk about the apus and generators and an apu is an auxiliary power unit they are usually on the frame rail of a truck 
Um, the, they're usually like a, like a black steel box or um, diamond plate or right. something like that is what yeah. they typically are. And they may be like Carrier or Comfort Pro or Dynasis or Go Power or Green Power or uh, Thermo King has the Tri Pack. Like, there's lots of them out there. And what they are for is when you're at a uh, at a truck stop or, or at a ship or something and you are sitting there in the cab, um, you can have air conditioning and you can have electricity, you know, the little creature comforts or heat without having to operate the engine. So the the main engine of the truck, if you remember back in the olden days, people would just leave their trucks running idling forever, right? Fuel was dirt cheap and... Um, there were no emissions control systems or anything on the truck, so you could just idle them forever. And a diesel engine can just idle forever. Like it, it, the engine itself really can do that. It's, it doesn't mind it. Um, the problem is diesel got real expensive, and so when diesel got real expensive, people started putting uh, looking for ways to save money, and they realized like a small investment in a other power source besides the engine was actually that that SIP fuel was better to run. So an engine idling at like high idle will probably set you back like one to 1.2 gallons per hour. An APU has a very tiny little baby diesel engine in it and they're sipping about a quarter a gallon an hour. So it's considerably less fuel. Sure. Also with the emission stuff that's arisen, that engine has to run hot for the emission systems to work properly. So when they're going down the road and you're pulling a big load and they're working, they're running hot. When you are, um, you know, at a, at a construction site and a cement mixer or a dump truck is running that cement mixer or it's lifting that dump truck up and down, it's got to generate lots of power to make that happen uh, for its power takeoff, and it keeps that engine hot. When you're sitting idle, even at high idle, it's not producing a lot of heat right. because it's barely working. Your air conditioner compressor and your alternator takes very little power to work. Um, so it's it's using a bunch of diesel, which it's then throwing into the emission system. It's not getting hot enough to clean that off. And so what has to happen is these forced regenerations have to happen. So after doing that for so long, we've all been there. And, and, um, I think uh, in this group of people I'm talking are, are with, where you've idled your truck, you get that little dreaded light, and you have to do a forced regen, which means you press a button, your engine idles up really high, a lot of times your engine fan will kick on too because um, of what it's doing. It's shooting, uh, depending on the on the system, some shoot diesel and, and actually catch it on fire and burn out the uh, emission stuff. Um, and that just uses even more fuel. And it's really not good. A An in motion while the truck is running, uh, your truck will automatically regenerate itself without having to do all that. And it's a much more efficient and better use of that technology forcing it you don't get a, a great region and what happens is you end up burning up those sensors you end up having a lot of um, issues with the filters and so it's just best not to idle your truck um, it's really really something that's terrible to do these days because of the high fuel prices and the emission stuff that's on the truck uh, so these apus are usually like little two and three cylinder diesel engines little tiny tiny things uh, they do have a couple different ways. So when you look at something like a tri pack from Thermo King, and I think um, I think Go Power to, or Green Power does the same thing, and there's a few others that do. They have uh, that little diesel. Uh, it it has its belt runs a compressor for an air conditioner, mm-hmm. uh, just like your car would have, and it runs a uh, alternator, just like your car would have, to recharge your batteries. And so a lot of people will take that. They'll put a like a power inverter on the truck, which is those things um, that'll take you know twelve volts and make it a, a regular one ten outlet. I mean, they make them. You see them as small as like one that'll fit in your cigarette lighter, right. all the way to at a truck stop. You look at them; they almost look like those old school amplifiers mm-hmm. uh, from back in the Got day. The cooling fans on, cooling them. fans yeah. on them, and everything. Um, and then you can run like a micro off the big ones. You can run like a microwave and a TV and all that stuff off of them. And so those APUs are just constantly charging the batteries, keeping the batteries charged, and that's how you get your electricity. It's a way to do it, uh, and it works decent. Then that compressor has an evaporator condenser, and it actually blows cold air inside your your 
room and, 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 and everything. It works nice for factory sleeper trucks. Not too big. The ACs are all sized to be able to cool down your typical factory sleeper truck. They produce enough electricity because all you can really do in those things is a microwave or a television or maybe one of those little bitty coffee pots, um, laptop, that kind of thing, um, but not a whole lot more. For us, we run the bigger sleepers, and so now we have water heaters. We have um, rooftop, AC. rooftop rooftop air AC. conditioners. We have, the obviously, televisions. The, the cooktop. My, uh, cooktop ovens, induction cooktop ovens. Our microwaves are also convection ovens. So we have a much higher demand on the electrical load. So the ones we use, same little three-cylinder diesel engine, and they hook up to a 6,000-watt generator. There is no compressor on ours. There's no alternator on them. Well, it's not, some have an alternator, but most don't. They produce 6,000 watts of 110 out power, just like a regular generator would do, right? So from there, we also have some that are, uh, they're not APUs that make it 6,000 watts. We have the generator models, which are just actual generators like Onans, like you'd find on an RV. Um, and they produce 8,000 watts of, of, of 110 power. So we take those, we put them in the truck, we actually do the opposite. We take that 110 power and we make a uh, battery charger to keep our batteries charged. So we're taking 110 and turning it 12 volt, keeps batteries charged, lots of power. We can run a rooftop, we can run our microwave, we can run our cooktop. Not all at the same time necessarily. Like if you are cooking something in your oven, in your microwaves, uh, or microwave oven, and you've got something on the cooktop, mm -hmm. and you've got your hot water heater going, and your rooftop AC, well, there's just not enough electricity for right. all of that all at once. But you can do like most of that. Vincent, I used to call that the Macarena. A little bit, right? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta plan yeah. a meal accordingly. You really yes. do. Yeah, I mean, like in, in the water heater is one thing that catches most people off because they're not thinking about the fact they got a fifteen or eighteen hundred watt. Uh, draw right. that they're not may not even need. You know, if you're not using wa hot water that time, turn it off. Turn it off. That's, um, that's funny you say that because we had a truck where we had an issue with that. We had to get it really cold inside. If it was hot outside, get the AC really cold, turn the AC off, run the microwave, yeah. or run the cooktop. That was and I never thought about the water heater causing a, causing that issue. You were today years old. I was today oh. years old when I when I, I know. well that. the next time y'all go out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> usually, usually Laredo, I. I plan meals differently to where oh, yeah. we wouldn't have hot. to yeah. kick the AC. Like he was saying, get it cold, turn it off so you could run something else. So I finally yeah. figured out more things like meats and cheese and, you know, charcuterie board or sandwiches or you know, something different like that. Because it just, uh, the truck we were in at the time, yeah, um, out of the three, just couldn't sustain cooking. Yeah. Yeah. With well, the air conditioner. When it's 110 degrees outside, too, it's... Not like There's you can not just, much you, can do. you can't turn the AC yeah. off for two hours to right. cook. Yeah. And that um, included the Instapot. So, like, even yeah. the Instapot plugged in draw, drew enough electricity that the air conditioner would just trip the breaker every time. Water so, heater. Uh, never thought mm -hmm. about that. Yep. So, you all out there listen to that water heater. Yep. Sometimes you got to kill it with the breaker. Sometimes you, some of the sharks have a little, just a switch. Yep. So. Yep. The, then we do the 8,000-watt ones for the, um, well, as an experiment with, <laughs> I should say, uh, with some of the shower trucks. Not all, but some. So that's kind of how we've built that. So what so what happened is, see what happened was, yeah. when we got in the business, we bought a factory sleeper truck. That truck had a tri-pack on it, and we rebuilt that thing. I mean, literally, I think the diesel engine block was original. Wow. <laughs> we, <laughs> no, uh, I Literally everything, all the belts, all the pulleys, all the alternators, like the compressor, uh, the condenser coil, the the evaporator coil, like everything. But, I mean, we got like thirty or 40,000 hours out of it, which is a That's long, a long hours, yeah. time. Um, and that diesel engine still ran just fine. Um, it was just everything else about it that we had to replace. Um, and it was really reliable. It would keep that truck ice cold in the dead of winter. And I'm, I'm sorry, uh, dead of... <laughs> that sounds like your speed. Yeah, I exactly. Stole dead of winter. Yeah. That sounds yeah. like your speed. So I kid you not, in that truck, because you're right... You could get it cryogenic levels? We actually... It was a really... it was We bought it used, and it was a cheap spec. They actually didn't do the winter package. So these trucks, you can get a winter package, which basically means they have insulation in them, uh, on a factory sleeper truck. They didn't buy that. Ooh. So this truck had no insulation. It was just a vinyl wall, a space, and the aluminum. 
wow. from the outside. So in the middle of winter, if it was a bright sunny day, it'd be a hundred degrees inside that sleeper. <laughs> oh, because there's no insulation. The yeah, sun beating the sun down beating. on it would just bake it. Now, Never if, the, if there that. was no sun, it'd be freezing. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so I would commonly, if we're sitting somewhere, we'd run the AC. In winter? In middle of winter. And we actually had a time where the AC quit working and we're like, crap, what happened? When we got a little further south, we uh, had time on a load. We popped into a Thermo King. The guy showed me we had a piece of ice got stuck on the fan. <laughs> and so when the fan went to go turn, it couldn't. And it popped the fuse. And so the guy showed me, like, here's how to change fuse out. Didn't charge me anything. It was the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, in the middle of winter, we ran that thing because it was wow. a poorly designed situation. But it was dependable. It ran really, really well uh, in the middle of summer in Laredo. It would still stay cold. It was, it was, it was, it was a really good system. But again, for the bigger sleepers, it just didn't work. The first custom sleeper truck we bought, again used, had a PowerTech generator on it. And that thing was a tank. It did not auto turn on to save your battery, so you had to constantly monitor your battery. Um, but it, when it did work, like when you did need it, it always ran. It was always dependable. It was a great generator. Um, and come to find out, when we started building our own trucks, they weren't making them anymore. So we we're like, well, that figures. Yeah. Um, you had a power tech, didn't you, at one point? Yes. How was yours? Uh, or do it, you remember? It ran great. Yeah. Yep. Quiet. Um, Never had any issues. It was just a really well-built generator. So we actually, uh, so we couldn't get those. So that, that new truck we ordered, we got the, the Onan, which was the equivalent of it. Quiet generator, real power, you know, all this stuff. You remember from previous episodes, that thing got delayed. That truck got delayed, 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 delayed. So we ended up buying a couple of used trucks to kind of fill in the gap. And yes. the first one we bought had a Comfort Pro on it. Now, I had heard horrible stories about Carrier Comfort Pros. And I didn't know anything about them. I'd never experienced them. But I'm like, it's on the truck. We'll run it. If it doesn't work, I'll swap it out for an Onan. But, like, let's just see how it does. It was such a reliable generator. I was stunned at how um, well it did. Uh, it producing that, that 6,000 watts power. Again, if you're doing everything, you got to balance a little bit. Mm -hmm. But... Still, it, it would really take a beating and, and do quite a bit. We also bought another truck that had an Onan on it. So, I, you know, at this point, we've got a Tri-Pack, a PowerTech, two Onans, and uh, this Comfort Pro, which is a wild assortment. Tri-Pack won't work for the next truck because, again, custom sleeper is too big. Truck we were building was a, 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 that M2 dry van, and we didn't want to put an Onan on it um, because we we're trying to keep the cost down. And I, we'd had such good success with the Comfort Pro. I'm like, let's try it again. And so we built it with that tripod, with that Comfort Pro on it, and it worked great. And I'm like, huh. Oh, another thing about them is uh, the Comfort Pros would go a thousand hours between oil change. And Onan, I think the book says 150 hours. We ran ours for 500. The book says 150. We would Ooh. do 500. Um, but that was iffy. If you ran it for a thousand, you would kill your motor like they're not they're super finicky that way so that was another nice thing about having the comfort pro but when we started building our bathroom trucks we're like hey these are nice big reward trucks let's go ahead and put those onions back on them so we started adding those onions back on and we did four or five six of them something like that and then we found once these generators these onions expensive generators started getting two three four thousand hours on them they started breaking down left and right. And we were like, you got to be kidding me. So, okay, it is what it is. Get it to the shop, get it fixed. Because the Onans are primarily marketed as an RV generator, mm -hmm. when you go to a Cummins dealership, who Cummins owns Onan, they think of you as an RV customer. And so they will very much do the, all right, well, uh, you know, leave your vehicle here with us and then, you know, Four, five, six weeks, we'll get it back to you. <gasps> and it's like, well, that's not an option. It's a, This is a working truck. Right. So we found several Cummins dealerships across the nation that were good and would acknowledge we're a truck and would work us in and get us back out. But that was few and far between. I mean, you had Onans. Did you ever run into that? We did. 
Uh, and you were right. There was one place in particular, um, Sacramento. There's Ooh. a Cummins. They the, were the, the best. Yes. The absolute best by far. Love their facilities. They had um, shore power on the back of their lot. They would let us come in and stay overnight and plug in and free of charge. And, I mean, they were great. So, Anytime we had Onan issues, we would pray to break down in that area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you could just find a lot of Reno, it's just right there across the yeah. mountain. Yeah, there absolutely. So, um, but that stinks, right? Like, it does. to have to send your, all your trucks to California yeah, to get their yeah. generator yeah. fixed. Has it gotten better? No. Just a quick note. So, no? we were, oh. uh, <laughs> so, we were probably, how many trucks were we in? Um, I don't know, like, let's call it eight Onans in. That we just said, we're going to go back to Comfort Pro, and that's just all it's going to be from now on. So we built a, a large number of trucks with Comfort Pros, and Carrier did something that was kind of strange. They were, all these Comfort Pros were built in America, proudly built in America, yada, yada, yada. And they moved their factory to Canada. And we're like, okay, I mean, Chrysler and Ford built a lot of their vehicles in Canada, so... I wish it stayed American, but that it is what it is, right? right. right. Like, okay. What's, what's your choice at this one? There is no choice. No. Yeah. And when they made that move, those APUs started coming out with issues, lots of problems, lots of issues, and we were like, "Oh man, you got to be kidding me!" So what do you do? We didn't want to go back to the Onans because you couldn't get them serviced, you couldn't get them worked on. So we're like, we just dealt with them for a while, and Eric and I were invited to um, go down with. Uh, a few people from FedEx to the Great America Truck Show in Dallas. And uh, we were there repping our, our our brand, but also FedEx, you know, kind of at the same time. And um, had a pretty good trip. We were walking around the, the, the truck show, and there was this group of people from Dynasys. Now, I remember Dynasys. They made a decent product, but they used these, like, uh, Perkins and Caterpillar. They're, I mean, you, everybody knows Caterpillar, but Perkins is another one. They made de small diesel engines, and uh, those were 200 to 500 hour oil change intervals. And so I never understood why they use those versus a Kubota, which is a thousand hours. We went over there, and, and I told them like, you know, I like your product. I just wish you use these engines, and we'd be interested in buying some from you. And they're like, we do. And I was oh. like, what? And they're like, yeah, we started b building with Kubota like a couple of years ago. And I was like, really? And so I sat down and talked with them. They had a 6,000 watt. Uh, basically, it was a, a Comfort Pro killer in their minds. It was the same specs as what they did, only better. And I was like, this is great. This, this might be an option for us. I said, you know what I really love is an 8,000 water. Because our bigger trucks with the bathrooms and the hot, bigger hot water, I mean, you're talking 10-gallon hot water heaters at this point, and all the stuff, I'm like, I, I really like something that's a 1,000-hour interval, that extra power, Something simple simple to run, uh, not a belt-driven. I want a direct-drive APU that bolts on the side of a truck. I don't want to spend $1,000 or $2,000 on a fancy case to put it in. Like, I want to make it super serviceable. And we worked back and forth for a long time, and actually they bespoke build us this generator. Wow. It was such a good thing. They put it on the market as just a product they sell now. So it's no longer bespoke. They just make it. Right. So we were really happy. And we actually talked to one of our dealers here in uh, Columbus. They talked to the people from uh, Dynasys. Dynasys and um, opened up them as a dealership. And they started putting them on for us. And I was so happy. We had this beastly 8,000-watt strong generator. Did you have one? I did. Really? I mean, some teething issues at first. Yeah. But they dialed it in. Really strong, really good generator. Then they, their little 6,000-watt generator, which was the Comfort Pro killer, that thing was quiet. Mm -hmm. It's considerably quieter than a Comfort Pro. It was super uh, sleek, looked really nice. Um, they made the outside case out of powder-coated aluminum, not powder-coated steel, which Carrier did, which means no rust. You know, they just oh, wow. they end up looking really nice after a few years. So we were very happy with them. And we own quite a number of them. Quite a few, yeah. Um, and in the meantime, we did get a few trucks with Comfort Pros on them still. And all those teething issues from Canada are all gone. You know, yeah. they're, they're now making a reliable product again. Sure. 
Um, so we were happy with that as well. And so we kind of were taking both. I got to say, four or 5,000 hours in, we are finding out that this might have been one of those things I'm not as happy with. On the dinosaurs? Yeah. So oh. we have, this is one of those where, like, it's a good product. It is quiet. I think their controller is trying to do too much. Like, it's a really cool LED, sc LED, LED screen? LCD, 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 LCD yeah. screen. It's very nice. It's slick. There's a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. I would say too much information. It confuses the drivers as mm -hmm. to, like, do I need an oil change or what? Because it's, it's, it's selling them way too much information. Because it's an intelligent controller that's always on, after so many hours of being on, and we're talking days, after days of being on, it'll lock up. And you literally have to, like, old school computer, unplug it and replug it back in. Yeah. Oh, and so control alt delete, huh? Exactly. So it's like uh, I thought we had an amazing like what setup, and then um, have you brought it to their attention? We have, oh. and they've done some software updates, and they have worked with us, and okay. and things have gotten better. The other thing is we we kind of have another situation like the Cummins thing, where this is not a situation where like the uh, RV side of it it makes us. You know, they think we're a di different customer than we are. Right. This is just one of the downsides of working with a smaller company is there just are fewer shops. Mechanics. Mechanics shops. to work with. I think Don and Jimmy have identified several across the country, considerably more than the Onans, uh, considerably more than the Cummins shops um, to work with. But it's just tricky. It's not mm. it's not like Carrier where there's literally every city in America has right. a Carrier dealership. Sure, sure. We've actually on our latest round of trucks that the the Panther trucks I talked about a few weeks ago that we're taking delivery of, um, we did swing back to Carrier because they have come out with a new generator to oh. replace the Comfort Pro called the Aspen. Extremely similar to what they're already building from a mechanical side. It's the same diesel engine, same generator, like that kind of stuff hasn't changed. The controller is new, but it's not a big fancy. You've had more experience with it than I have. It's not a big fancy panel like the Dynasys has, no, right? No, it's not. It's it's, not. it's, it's actually a more of panel. a. It's more of a simple, right? It is. Um, simple panel. The shell of it is no longer that steel, steel. that rust. Yeah. It's actually like a composite. I would say plastic. It's a fancy plastic. It's yeah. not just plastic. Plastic. It's a, it's a durable, rubbery plastic. Um, so that means no more rust, no more ugly looking components, easy to replace if it ever gets cracked kind mm -hmm. of thing. So I'm excited to see what they're doing um, with that. And um, going forward, we did buy a few Onions. I think we have seven of them now. Oh. Um, to run on our tractor fleet. Yep. And we are finding out that that absolutely has not been resolved. And we are still having issues with Cummins dealerships. So we currently have a spare Onan generator, and uh, we'll be using that to swap out when it one breaks down and get it fixed, and then it, it's, it's just constantly have one extra spare generator. It's ridiculous. It's the stupidest thing in the world, but, you know, we have to make up for their downfall. So you can't explain what you are, and they don't go, oh. Mm -mm. They, they, don't just, they just don't function that way internally. They don't care, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Um, it's funny. I got a phone call today from one of our tractor teams who was temporarily in a straight truck. Mm -hmm. And so in the tractor, they have the Onan. Yes. In the straight truck, they have the Comfort Pro. And he called and he said, what menu do I need to get into to find the hours on this APU? Oh. And I said, well, do me a favor. Go back to the, the main screen. Because like, it's okay. I said, look in the top left-hand corner. Yeah. He looked. He goes, are you kidding me? Yeah. Because on the main screen of the Comfort Pro in the top left-hand corner says. is where you find your hours. Where both the Onan and the Dynasys, you have to go in deep into, not deep, deep, but into menus to find those hours. Yeah. And he just, he looked right at it and didn't, he thought I had to go into a menu to find it. So the Comfort Pros um, are much simpler. They have fewer, they have more buttons on, on the front than a Dynasys, but those buttons generally are single use versus mm -hmm. navigating through menus. Yeah. So it's 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 pretty. It was pretty. It was a funny phone call to me. Yeah. We only had the one, right? We all have always all had three, comfort pros for all three. Three trucks. Yeah. yeah. 
We, super, I mean, super simple. We are by far majority comfort pros. We are. Yeah. I mean, we probably yeah. have 80 comfort pros in the fleet. Do we yeah. have a- Aspens already on some trucks? One. One. And you've so th- fiddled with it, Vincent? A, I, I don't a little know. bit, yes. Um, Played? A little bit. Guys. And I actually, I actually went, took that truck to the carrier dealer not far from us mm-hmm. and had them kind of walk me through some stuff. Oh, nice. And, but we learned things about that controller um, that is completely different than the, the comfort pro yeah so it's 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 interesting well, we're, we're gonna it's a learning curve yeah well, yeah well what i like about it uh so the onan tells you nothing eventually nothing. you have to go through and like see how many hours you have mm-hmm. uh it's very dumb when you turn your truck off you actually have to go and tell it to check literally press a button for it to two, two buttons. buttons you have to press two buttons <laughs> you have to press a button and confirm it with an air button mm-hmm. for it to watch your battery so if you forget to do that, oh, you to watch your battery. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, you just you just got yeah. home. You're gonna be home for a week. You need that thing to kick on and off while you're at home to keep your battery charged. You get home. You're unloading the groceries out of the truck into the house. You know you're getting ready to hang out, and you forget to just press that stupid button. Come back to a dead truck. It's a two hundred dollars service call. Ugh. that's frustrating with them. Yeah, uh, the Whereas the Dynasys and the Comfort Pro just automatically correct and. The Dynasys, um, so the so the Comfort Pro has the hours in there, but it, that's all it has. It, it won't that's tell it. it won't tell you when you need a service. The Dynasys actually keeps track of your oil changes, so when you do an oil change, it'll tell you, hey, in a thousand hours, as long as you as long as you reset it, as long as you reset, it'll it. actually <laughs> count down and yep. it throws a little alert up. Hey, you need to get the service due. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. So that's really nice feature. But again, you it you takes you it, it takes you resetting it. Yep. But I mean. Like most cars these days, do the same thing with their yeah, oil with change. The oil change. Yeah, you got to reset it there, yep. but it's just remembering to go and hit hit that reset. Right. So they all do something kind of neat. Mm-hmm. What I really like about the com- the new Aspens, I should say, is a lot of the programming is done behind the scenes on a computer. You have to actually plug into it, and your computer tells it what to do. Battery monitor, for example, I don't think anybody intentionally turns it off. But it is easy to accidentally turn it off yeah. on the Comfort Pro. With the new Aspen, once we set it, you won't be able to turn it off. It will kick on and it will. Ki- oh, that's batteries. nice. Yes. Um, so there's little things like that that are actually kind of sweet that I'm looking forward to working with on the Aspen and, and again learning it a little better. So um, you know, are we going to keep buying Dynasys? Probably. Uh, but we're definitely going to try the Aspens out and and get a I good feel for those. I think that's part of those. it, isn't it? Though. Yeah. Well, and it's trucking, and like all trucks break down. The good thing about having a lot of anything is you know when they break down, how right. they break down, where you can get them fixed, you that kind of thing. You start seeing those patterns. You see those patterns, and you get really good at fixing them. How long has Aspen been on the market? Weeks. Oh. Yeah. Are there other? <laughs> <laughs> are there others already currently using it, beta testing it? I don't I mean I don't know what the I words think are. We might be the first expediters using sure. it. We might be. But yeah. there are definitely some on tractors. I recall but um, not many. Their carrier dealer talking about the Aspen six months or so ago. Yeah. Uh, but they were concerned that there wasn't a generator only option at that Correct. point. Because it was it was Full APU yeah. with their comfort control unit or CCU with heating and air conditioning coming off the the APU, which, and we don't use that on the APU. Right. So this is kind of yeah, yeah it's it's a relatively new uh, model of the Aspen. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And even on like the the power only version of the carriers, the Comfort Pros. Of the Comfort Pros. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a relatively new product. So. The old school ones, part of why I said I was dreading it, buying them, because um, I'd heard bad things. They actually were a full Comfort Pro, and whenever they installed them, they actually, the company that was doing it invented, not not, not Comfort Pro, but the actual company installing them, invented a, I'm going to call it defeat switch, to be able to not install the, the uh, CCU and only use it as a generator. So they were basically engineering these things after they were already built to do this. Through installing enough of those, Carrier said, now what are y'all doing? (laughs) And Carrier said, well, we can just sell that to you. 
And so that's how the generator-only version of the carrier even came to exist, was this one company in Columbus already doing these conversions, and then once carriers started doing it themselves, way more reliable, way more solid. Sure. Yeah. Um, that's how that came to be. But same thing with Dynasys. Dynasys did not have a um, a generator-only standalone unit. It was when we talked to them and kind of explained what we were doing that they just immediately from day one said, yeah, we can go in there. It's For them, it's a software update thing, right? They can just go in there and tell the software you're not going to have a CCU, which is a, a CCU is a climate controlled unit. So it's your AC and heat. So they just, so the program, so the pro the, the display controller knows you don't have that. So it's not going to freak out. Cause like any of these things, if it thinks you have it and, you, and it can't see it, it just shuts the whole system right. down. So sense. you don't want it to think it has one. Right. Yeah. It's been a very interesting thing. So they did get the Aspen obviously figured out cause we do already have those, but even with the Aspen's, like this first round of of trucks we're getting right now, not all of them have it. No, a couple of them are uh, comfort, comfort pros. pros because the switch just didn't happen in time for us to get them installed. So we actually have some of the older comfort pro models. Now they're brand new brand units. Brand new, yeah, but they're um, but same they're older technology. Older technology, yeah. and then some are the Aspen. And it's funny because I was just over at uh, Fighter Freightliner the other day, and I was showing a truck to a team. Um, that they're going to be getting, and I was like, "Oh, look, it's a Comfort Pro." Like, <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, so you know, we have trucks we haven't even bought yet that have yeah. the older technology than what we've already bought." So it's it's interesting. Yeah. Um, Fun my, how that works. My truck with the one new one that you got us uh, when we were out, we had the Dynasys 8K, and I remember going the first time we had service on it. We went to uh, our place here in Columbus, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he told me he was like, "Wow," and I said, "What?" And he goes, "Your serial number is zero 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 three." Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, that kind of stuff. That's fun. I mean, you know, to be a part of that creative process. Sure. And, and what's really fun is the engineer over at Dynasys. His name's Patrick. Oh, <laughs> so, so it's like, like Patrick Square. Yes. Yeah, so we. So like, all the emails were like Patrick to Patrick from Patrick to Patrick. From yeah. Patrick from, like, um, but being able to work with them and. Figuring little things out, like the first round of design, not we never built it, actually had the generator and the engine backwards of how it is now. And the reason that it is the way it is now versus what it was is it was just me writing back going, hey, um, I see it looks like the oil filter on this unit is facing the frame rail. Is that going to be hard to get to? when they're servicing it. Yeah. And they were like, yes, it will. <laughs> and they revised it and flipped it around. So now it's when you take the cover off, it's easy to get to all that stuff. Wow. They put the fuel filter in an easy, accessible way. They put the air, uh, air filter in an easily accessible area. So our so. company, our vendors, our shops are saying thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question for you, though, about the engineer over at Dynasys. Did you call him Pat? I did not. <laughs> curious. I, I was curious. Have I you visited or toured their facility? I have not. Uh, they're out of, I want to say Nebraska or Idaho or something. So, um, I think yeah, it'll be fun. That's a bit of a drive. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Cold. It's Richard. cold. It's 24-7 cold. I, there. I will say what's really cool is they do these generators for trucks, and they also do these generators, APUs, power units for, like, those massive cranes that are building skyscrapers. Oh, yeah. Big and, tower cranes. Yeah, and they use them for, like, Massive mining backhoes and or not backhoes, front loaders and wow. these huge dump trucks and stuff. So their equipment is being used all over the place. Like That's cool. It's uh, it's not just a trucking no. deal. They've actually found a way to like really um, spread their stuff around in a really That's cool way. Cool. But um, and they have a fully electric option out too. Um, so it's a battery powered kind of unit. It. Is is like you have to use a CCU for that because of the battery, so it doesn't work for us. Again, it's not it, it's not sized for a big sleeper, so it's a product we don't use. But it is a really cool uh, thing they have. Right. Um, Thermo King has one out as well. So um, I think that I think in the future we're going to see a lot of those come along. Um, I've been watching on the RV world, so like you know a lot of times the RV world gets something before we will. The RV world, they're doing these lithium setups from the OEM, so from the manufacturer, not like someone's got an RV and they're retrofitting it to do this. From the manufacturer, where they're putting these 
lithium lithium battery kits in that are strong enough to run an air conditioner. Like these are big, serious battery kits, and they have worked with you know Ford or whoever to who's making the chassis or Mercedes, um, where it monitors the battery and it'll turn the RV's engine on, charge the battery. They're putting these huge alternators on them. They'll do a. It turns the engine on, does a high speed idle with this big alternator on it, charges the battery system up quickly, turns the the engine off, and then you've got uh, hours of air condition like power with air condition for air conditioner and everything. Plus, obviously, when it's charging, you still can use all that stuff right. as well. Um, they did a test on one. It was a a van like a Class B van camper, so it's bigger than any sleeper we have. You know, these yeah. things. This is a twenty foot. Uh, camper and we have I think 12 foot's our biggest sleeper so this is a lot bigger than what we normally have and um, they ran that thing, they brought it to a festival they checked the hour meter on the on the van before they left and they kept the inside of the of the RV set to like 72 or 73 degrees left and came back over 12 hours later it was still the same temperature and the engine had not kicked on. Wow, that's so like, impressive yeah, it's Wow. Now the batteries were just about dead. Sure. The engine was about to kick on, you know. Like but still twelve hours. But still it's it's a crazy yeah. amount of time. And then it only char it's, it's like an hour of runtime for another twelve hours of right. use. Wow. So it's I think that technology is coming to trucks. I really do. It's just not here yet. Because you have to get both the APU and the truck manufacturer on the same side. Right now they're bolt on products that are separate, but once that thing happens i think it'd be really cool to see what happens then um because i'll tell you this apus by far are the number one things that break down our trucks mm -hmm. by far <laughs> yes they are um and yes, so they are. getting that to a point where we don't have to use that little diesel engine anymore i can't wait wow now i will say too that system i just talked about with yeah. the rv it's about thirty thousand dollars so it's not oh, cheap. Easy. It, it's it's not cheap. An APU is ten grand, so it's three times the price. But you know, like uh, everything with um, maturity, the price yeah, drops. Yeah, the price will come down. Sure. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be exciting when that actually comes. Yeah, that's so, a pretty cool story about APUs. I didn't know it all. You know, I mean, I do, I feel like I do now. Well, I know most of it. Yeah. Well, you lived most of it, right? You yeah. you saw kind of some of that stuff sure. yeah. happen um, in the dynasties. You only ever got to experience, but there were other dynasties that were right alongside your trucks because yeah. you were, y'all were there in that stage where we were buying Comfort yeah. Pros and dynasties and all. That truck we talked about it on the last episode, uh, where the battery died in the fuel island, and yes, indeed, and we. So again, last episode. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's like, go try the start in the APU when I fire this battery up. That's right. And I go back there and I'm like, I don't know how to turn this one on. Is it push up and hold? Like, and you yeah. have to hold you until hold it, it till fires? It yeah. I'm like, how do, it was a no nan. And yeah. I'm just not familiar with it. Yeah. Even working in the yard for well, you know, the first year, I. I don't I, think I well, ever... We didn't have an Onan in the yard until we got that first tractor. We had trucks in the fleet with had Onans, but they, yeah. not many, a couple of them left. But we didn't have an Onan in the yard until we got that first tractor. And by that time, you were already in recruiting. Yeah. Well, So I'm in there trying to figure out how to start up an APU. Yeah. And it's, like, not, it's not just you. Our good friend Vince, Chili, I believe he goes by. Yes. I do, yeah. Uh, I remember him calling me the first time. Mm -hmm. He ever got in a tractor and was like, I yep. pressed the on button and nothing, <laughs> nothing happened. happened. <laughs> <laughs> nothing happened. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, "Oh, what? What is it?" Yeah. You're like, "Oh, and I'm like, "Oh, it's a press and hold." Yeah. He's like, "Press and hold." And I'm like, "Hold for a long crazy. time." Too. Yeah, you, you have to hold for a long time. Yep. And they're actually they lose their prime way faster than these other APUs do. So you will actually find yourself having to press the power off button and hold, which is the prime. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so. Why do we like these generators again? We don't. Yeah. Uh, the dead quiet. That's why we like dead it. Quiet. Dead, dead quiet. quiet. Dead quiet. Dead quiet. But I even even when I drove, so I had a power tech and I drove. I never drove a truck with an Onan, but power techs were not dead quiet, but darn close. I didn't like it because with a Comfort Pro running, it's louder, 
it's consistent, it kind of drowns out the noise of a truck it stop. Because yeah, a truck stop's not a quiet place. Yeah. And Onan being dead quiet at a truck stop, mm-hmm. you hear every in, every break, every time someone hits their electronic parking brake, yeah. every time the reefer's, uh, next, the reefer door. next door, the guy's uh, air dryer that goes off every 12 mm-hmm. seconds, you hear all of that. And so that's to me, that's annoying. I would rather have this constant, steady sound of a Comfort Pro. Just, uh, yeah. it just drowns everything out. I was in the yard this week uh, doing some... Uh, minor touch-up cleaning, and uh, I was on an upper bunk, and there wasn't very much room. <laughs> and I'm like, had finished cleaning it all, and uh, I'm like, my back is killing me. So I laid down on that Again? upper bunk for just a few moments, just to kind of s- stretch out because it was so kind you, of cramped. You were literally lying down on the job. I was literally lying down on the job. <laughs> <lying down the, laughs> and uh, the vibration of that generator, I don't know, there's something about it. It just. Uh, You're ready to close your eyes and I call was, it a day? <laughs> I was. And all I was doing was just trying to stretch the back out before I hopped down off that yeah. upper bunk. But I'm like, wow. I, I mean, we've been off the road for two years, almost two and a half. Two and a half and, years, yeah. And I'm like, there's still something about that. That generator, just that that lull. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is that mean you have trucking in your blood? I'm not sure what I, it is. I think it's just. I think it's a frequency. It's 1800 RPM. Oh. Uh. So uh, the carriers are constant speed. So no matter if they have no load or if they have the heaviest right. load, they're always going to maintain 1800 RPM. Um, which is why you don't hear them like, Rubbing, or like yeah. up or down or anything. They're right. just constantly at same yeah. speed, and uh, it just it. it does something to our internal clock. It does. I think, you know, we work on 60 seconds in a, you know, in a minute uh, and 60 cycles, 60, 60, our electricity is 60 cycles, 60 Hertz. Like, I think we've all been programmed so much to either 60 cycles or 24 frames, which is what our eyes like that 1800 is divisible by both of those. And it's like, there it is just, something mundane it just and soothes it soothes. Us. It was very yeah. soothing. Yeah. Can we hook one up and like maybe run it out the when our neighbors will love us for it. No, they'll oh yeah. Oh, yeah they'll yeah, love but it. can we like hook one up, make the bed do a little Yeah. I'll work on that while you're gone last week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's And it's just awesome. not the sound. It's that again, that that slight little Yeah. It's vibration, yeah. Yeah, it, it, maybe it does center a person. Maybe that's that's what be. I miss. I don't know. Could be. I was reading the Onan manual last week, so I was trying to figure something out with it. And the Onans have some great features for RV camping. You know, they have a quiet time feature where yes. you turn it, you, you set your quiet time hours, and it will two hours ahead of quiet time. It will monitor where your battery's at, and if it thinks you need battery overnight, it will kick on to charge the battery so it won't come on overnight. There's some really cool features on the Onan that just don't apply to us. Yeah. So. Well, and they're, and they the reason the Onans are so quiet is they're National Park compliant. Every Onan made is National Park compliant. So National Park says no more than 50, 50, or, 60 de- 50 or 60 decibels at 50 feet away or something okay. like that. Yeah. Um, so th- it's very, very strict. Um, and they do have the quiet time hours because there's a lot of places that – do have a hard you cannot run mm-hmm. your generator at night you know and in all fairness m- so most rvs and all of our bolt sleepers use a magnum rv controller which has a little thing on there ags have you seen the button for ags it's one of the several little small ones okay yeah you probably seen it and just didn't know what this it was for because we don't yeah. use it ags is auto generator start so with the magnum inverter you can actually tell your inverter to control your generator. Interesting. Nobody does that on the straight trucks or on the tractors. But that's a feature that's there. Now, how that works, how they talk to each other, do we need to buy a module? I don't know any of that right. stuff. But <laughs> but that's what most RVs have. So most RVs aren't using their own in to auto the on or whatever. They're inverter. using their inverter to do it. So do you remember dry camping in Castaic? Yes. It was dry camping, Castaic. We decided to little lake right outside of the pilot there in Castaic, uh, Northern California. Southern okay, Cal- right like at the base. No, nor- Southern California, north of Los Angeles. Right at the base, kind of coming over the hill of the grapevine. Right. You come down the other okay. side before you go into Los Angeles, and uh, parking. Anyways, so we we went camping at a lake, and uh, it was dry camping. That was Castaic, right? 
Yes. Y'all did dry camping there, didn't you? It was we called Cascade yeah. Lake. Is that the one that's outside of um, so, L.A., just north? Yes, just north. Quiet yeah, hours. So we ran that generator all the way up until you had to quiet. And then we opened up the windows. It was a little on a cooler breeze. And I prayed that it didn't start up. To charge batteries? To charge batteries! <laughs> yeah. Before quiet hours ended. Um, <clears throat> We didn't make it. We didn't make it. <laughs> did you jump up immediately like, No! Yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, remember what we did. We might have I don't I really don't remember, but I was I was mortified. I'm like, they're gonna kick us out at four AM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing. <laughs> it's one thing I actually like about the comfort pros that frustrates me with the dinosaurs. <clears throat> so Dinosaur, if you're if you're listening, make a note. So the thing I like about the comfort pros is that it will try to fire up no matter what. Yeah. If you have four volts, it'll so give it a try. shot. Yeah. The Dynasis, if it sees like 11.9, I don't know what it really is. It's probably not that low or not that high, but it's like, nope, nope not, not, gonna even, gonna not it. even to give it a shot. Not yeah. even to try it. Your battery's too low. Oh, yeah. that makes me so mad <laughs> because you know what? It's a tiny little engine. 10 volts will fire it up. Right. Like, right. it won't fire your truck up, but it'll no, fire that little thing up, going. but the Dynasis won't even give it a shot. Oh, it makes me so mad. I, I wish they would take that program yeah. out. Like, give it a shot. Vince. I'd say flew across the room, but all of a foot and a half. Yeah. Panel. Not- <laughs> but boy, when that thing first started doing the chugga, chugga, chugga to start on up, yeah. he flew were you, across. And- were you in the lodge or were you in the chalet or were you in Bagheera? It was Bagheera, Bagheera. The very first one. Okay. Them two. So you mean he like reached over? But pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Probably. Yeah, probably. But, but we were, boy, we, we were... both were sound asleep. Again, we had the windows open, so there was this nice cool breeze. You probably heard that. Man, that thing first started to try comfort... to fire up, and we were like, so comfort no! Before a Comfort Pro will start up, it actually goes, Warning buzzer. And yeah. that's what it was. That's what yep. it was. Yep. 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 And we were only a month in. Like, literally. Oh, wow. <laughs> maybe even less than a month in, because yeah. we got home earlier than we planned. But yeah, we were literally. But there were thin, tent so campers like were, right next to us. Yeah. It was again. It was dry camping. So they woke up too because it's. If it was quiet outside, oh, like yeah. you could hear, oh. it, you could hear in a truck. The people yeah. across the lake probably heard us. <laughs> yeah. The people in the tents were like, <laughs> and what can you do except say back? <laughs> so there it is. That's how they <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because <laughs> two days later, we picked up a battery from Cummins in the Los Angeles area. Yeah. We talked about Cummins. A huge battery from them. And our, it was a box. It may have been multiple batteries. Took it up to uh, an electric motorcycle manufacturer in Southern Oregon. Mm. And that's the load that got us home for Dalton's Dalton and Anna's wedding. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. Wait. That doesn't y'all, happen very often. I'm sorry, y'all were. So I thought Dalton and Nina were married before y'all came on board. No, no. they were married a month after. So we, to, we came on board on July 1st. Yeah, and their wedding was early August. And I had oh. to either do no bridal party, and a wedding. Yeah. Or go to your girl's bridal shower, and no wedding, vice versa, one or the other. Oh, you gotta go to the wedding. Go to the wedding. So go to the wedding. and they because we they knew we were starting right away, yeah. and we knew were the there twenty one days or seventy five percent of a month and blah blah blah. Did you have thoughts of okay, we're gonna have to deadhead? Yes. Oh and, yes. Or, there was no or option. Was there any thought of like flying or no? At that point, it was just there was all the options were on the. I think I'm still sounding a little weird. Uh, <laughs> all the options were out there, they were. and then when we first started, we we they made were. sure we let staff know that. August is non-negotiable. Yeah. Not that that matters, but just knowing wherever we're at is how we got to get home. Well, I think so. I think that's fine. Like, because we had just barely started. Yeah, I think it's fine. I know a lot of people are like, uh, you know, we have something right away and we feel bad about saying it or whatever. But no, tell us because mm-hmm. we get that your life it didn't start six months ago saying, I'm going to be driving a truck. Right. Yeah. Like sometimes it does, but yeah. usually not. Yeah. So, I, I've started jobs before where they've been like, anything we need to know? And it's like, yes, I have these hard dates that I can't work. After that, I will schedule everything around. Sure. Well, y'all need job. me to. Yeah. But I've already got these things set in stone. And I can't do anything about it. When we first started, we had a trip to Mexico with uh, some family members uh, planned. And we told um, our fleet owner about that, that we were going to drive for. 
And, uh, boy, at day seven, we got a phone call. Why are you on that back of the truck ready to go? And it's like, no. I literally told you, going into this, that mm. these days I would right. be in Mexico. Yeah. Like, I understand it doesn't meet your policy. The exception was made when I told you about it and before you, 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 ev- before you ever sent me a contract. Yeah. So, um, I have no issue with those. It happens. We've got lots of teams that come on board, and they've got, oh, I've got a family cruise booked on these days, or I've got, you know, this, and a cruise, whatever. You've and it's probably like, booked, yeah. booked that well in advance. Sure. Well in advance, oh, yeah. and they're expensive. They're a lot of money, yeah. yada, yada. So it's like, no, we we get that. Yeah. Um, Speaking of cruises, I booked a cruise today for Sunday, so I'll, I'll be here next week. <laughs> no. I just booked it today. You told me that you were going on a cruise on Sunday. I thought you meant, like, Sunday to like only on Sunday. Like I thought you were doing. I thought you were going to Cincinnati and getting on the Ohio River. Right, and do to go a, up and river. down. I thought he was doing a motorcycle cruise. No, I'm, I've decided to go ahead and take the whole week. Even though I'm just doing the cruise on one day, I'm taking the whole week. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to travel time, right? Yeah, you travel there time. Back, yeah. I got to recover. You got to have recovery gotta recover. time, especially yeah. laundry day, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Grocery yeah. shopping day, well, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, you'll have so much company, being that buttermilks and He's Oregon. Old. He's Oregon. a bachelor. Yeah. Ooh, I'm a bachelor days. for a week. It's been a fun week being a bachelor. Not really. I bet it has. Really. How about when we did those motorcycles? That's going to be fun. That, that was, fun. was fun. That was a good time. <laughs> that was a good time. <laughs> I love talk. Oh, well, thanks for sharing about the generators yeah, or that was APUs a good time. That was a good talk. or auxiliary power units. Yeah, you know, I mean, some of the stuff's boring. Yeah. I apologize for that. And but I it's hope that we somehow. So. Some of us find that interesting. Others will just fast forward to Jerry telling us what we missed. Jerry? If you want to learn how to push, <laughs> to to push the button, you on. are not you are not allowed to cut any of that out. You have this right here. It's all you, buddy. If you want to learn how you to push the woke button him on the up APU, out of a nap. he had an yeah. eyes open nap going go. on. If you want to learn how to push the button on the APU, call eight three three Highfield. There we go. <laughs> you can also email us at eight three. No what? <laughs> the Outer Bell Podcast at gmail dot com. That's the one. Make yeah. sure you hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We have a lot of people that watch the show and listen and have not subscribed, so uh, it helps us out. What if you algorithm. didn't like the show? Um, I would prefer you to still hit that thumbs up button, <laughs> and you know what? Go ahead and hit it twice. Yeah, hit the subscribe button too, because we might get better, or we might not. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, <laughs> any button you hit, interact with us in the comments. We'd love to hear what you have to say. You can find us I on see. Podcast too. Yeah, we yeah you can find us on podcast. Uh, I, I uh, anywhere there's a podcast out there, YouTube, Apple um, Podcasts, the other ones. Yep. Yeah. That I'm not aware of. All of them. We see your comments. We see your messages. We read your emails. We know where you live. And um, speaking of which, I think it was, I may be wrong, so don't quote me, but I think it was Stephanie Hampton. It was. She said, Congratulations on being a new grandma. Oh, thank you. I saw that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And if you are dropping us a cat emoji, we see you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and thank you. I know who you are. Uh, so, uh, no, we are. Um, I don't know. We're all a bunch of tired people today. Yeah. Some yeah. days we're really funny. Some days we have like this episode. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to get this in here so we didn't miss out on, on buttermilk. I know it's already happened, but I'm very excited you get to see your little Great. grandbaby. Next and, week you're uh, going to have some photos to drop in. Cool. Grandma Snuggles. It's very exciting. Like this one right here? No. no. That yeah. one is a little inappropriate. A little bit. Oh, I could bit. get him one, huh? Could, I get how this post production yeah. and production. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I'll get this one, one in there. I don't. This one's my favorite. I don't understand why you put a smiley face over his face. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that yeah. just like privacy? The, privacy. Privacy. I get that. You know, celebrity babies and all. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. I get yeah. that. You'd hate to have your stalkers like yeah. Yeah. Drive exactly. the Oregon Trail to try to find. You know. No, maybe they drive the Oregon Trail to try and find her, and they get dysentery. <laughs> they make it. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's been a lot of fun uh thank y'all everybody hanging out with us thank you for watching us we hope we got you a few miles down the interstate or at least a little laugh before bed until next time stay safe and make good decisions don't leave money on the table and keep those wheels a turning good night bye bye